Greetings, flesh creatures. It is I, Megatron. On behalf of TFYLP, I want to congratulate you for listening to the most refined collector podcast on this miserable little planet Earth. Yes. Here you'll find knowledgeable fans discussing every aspect of Transformers and beyond. Now, enjoy the show while I continue my path to complete conquest of all of you miserable biological entities. Predacons! Terrorize! Greetings, humans! Welcome to Cut the Tape. I'm Rick Alvarez, the only weekly show that's filmed and aired every two weeks. It's been a while since we've had a nice little chat with each other. It's time we worked on some movie toys that I've been trying to open for a while, some studio series. Now that the 86 Studio Series is out, I mean, kind of, you really can't find those scourges anywhere, I thought I'd open some back stuff. So, we've got um, a very dusty Reche. We have Le Drift. Uh, let's see, we've got uh, Bumblebee versus Bumblebee 2-pack. I don't remember the scene in the movie where he fights himself. Oh, here's something exciting. We've got a dino. I got a great story about this from my days at the Big H. Uh, there's a B-127. I, you know, all right. I get it. It's a prequel. B-127. You, you really think these guys come out of the all spark or the well of sparks or whatever and it's like welcome to the world unit three i mean it does say it's from the bumblebee movie but i mean it's your main character you you gotta call him bumblebee on the package so that kids know to buy him Right? And something I'm really excited about. We got Le Star Scream. <laughs> uh, so, one thing I'm going to open up. I don't think we'll get to all of these, but we're definitely going to talk about Dino and Drift. Okay. So, we'll start with Drift. No, we'll start with Dino. I lied. Ha <laughs> ha! We'll start with Dino, because he was in Dark of the Moon. <clears throat> All right. Dino's only appearance, Dark of the Moon. <clears throat> Film I worked on a while at the Big H. So, Dino. I think you've heard the stories. We want to call him Mirage, but the owner of the car company... What the hell is he? Lamborghini, or... I, 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 I don't even know. It should say on here. It's licensed... By someone. I, I I actually don't care. It's red car. Red sports car. The guy's son's name was Dino. And so I don't know if it was like, hey, thanks for letting me use your car in the film. I'm going to call him Dino after your son as a thank you to you. Or if you want to use the car, you're going to name him Dino. We had always intended to call this guy Mirage. We started tooling at risk on an action figure of this character for the film what is tooling at risk well tooling at risk is when you don't have a license nailed down yet but you think you're gonna get it so you start making a toy uh things fall through the cracks so even though the toy was fully designed we only cut half the steel for it and then I assume it got sold off and recycled. So that's why we didn't get a real Dino or a Mirage. We were absolutely going to call him Mirage in the packaging. In Dark of the Moon. That, that's how it happened. I'm glad to see that we got a Studio Series version of him. I was hoping we'd get a Studio Series. Still holding out hope for Skids and Mudflap. They, hey. Love them or hate them. They were in the movie. They were in the movie, so the shelf is incomplete without them. I'm not a big fan, but the shelf demands it. 
So that's what uh, tooling at risk is, industry term. Uh, and that's why you never got the car. Drift. Boy, do I love Drift. So Drift was a, a, another character that we were putting forward for. Um, this is the last night version, uh, Age of Extinction. So we were working on that film. And we came up with three characters we really wanted to push. We, we knew we were going into it with a whole new Autobot team. Bumblebee and Optimus were the only two guys coming from the old team. We didn't know about the cameos from the other guys until like later. Like We had discussed Ratchet. But I went into the film thinking uh, they probably cut that scene out. So I was really surprised when Ratchet was in there. Anyway, we pitched three guys. We pitched Hound, Smokescreen, and Drift. And we each gave them kind of fun personalities. So Hound was very much the IDW version of Cup. He had the Saigar... He was an old Grizzled War veteran, and we did some really cool art for him. He looked like the G.I. Joe vamp with tons of guns on him. It was awesome. And I made sure to include on the presentation board that scene where he's, like, talking to General Witwicky in the comics where it's like, hey, what's with the cigar? And Cup's like, what's a cigar? Because, you know, anyway... So, to our amazement, it came back that, yeah, he looks like Bulkhead, and he's kind of fat like Bulkhead, but he still has got Hound Cup's personality. We're going to call him Hound anyway. All right. Smokescreen became Slingshot? Is that his name? I don't care. Slingshot. We wanted him to be Smokescreen. I love Smokescreen. Smokescreen was in Prime. He's in Prime because I love Smokescreen. Because there was a guy at Hasbro at the time, Michael Baylog. I know you're not watching. He loved Smokescreen at the time, too. That's how Smokescreen got into Prime. We're like, we're putting Smokescreen in. But we very much pitched the race car Smokescreen. And then it was Aaron Archer's idea to make him, like, a mixed martial artist, a boxer type. So he had, like, I don't know if we would say, like, he, he always had these big, like, heavy glove type hands or if they formed up around him uh but he was very much like a fighter a boxer he transformed beat the crap out of you he had the smoke uh power uh they all had powers hound had the holograms smoke screen had the smoke and then it came back uh yeah he's gonna be a corvette he's gonna be oh that guy's green we're gonna make him a different green uh, all right. Well, okay. I mean, you know, movies are, are always different. So, movies are always different. I like the movies. I remember first time I saw Age of Extension in the theater. Autobots are about to get onto lockdown ship. They're about to rescue Prime. And I'm sitting back going, this was a good movie. This was a good movie. And then I realized, oh, shit. The Dinobots haven't shown up yet. We've got another hour of this at least. And that's where it kind of lost me. But we pitched Drift, and Takar was very adamant. They did not want Drift to speak with your stereotype Japanese inflection in the voice. They were very adamant about that. And... Uh, they're like, they came to me and they said, that's how we feel. And I'm like, well, we can tell the studio, but it's not our call. What do you, how do you think it's going to be in the film? <sighs> yep. And I was like, yep. And then the movie came out and I'm sure they went, yep, because I went, yep. Drift. We pitched him very much like the toy version, the IDW version. He had the swords. He had uh, the awesome long sword. He had the two short swords. I put the inverted Arashikagi symbol on the sword in the presentation board. 
You might have seen that symbol on uh, a Micronaut, and you've definitely seen that symbol on the Shattered Glass version of Drift from Bakan. So, uh, at the time, we were playing with this idea that the Arashikagi uh, hailed, like, one of the Acroyers that crash-landed on Earth. He was called the Arashikagi, and he crashed in Japan, and he had uh, the Arashikagi symbol, but it was like this, and then... Because of the damage, it ended up looking like this, and then those secret ninja clans styled the Red Ninja outfits after the Croyer and called themselves after him, the Arashikagi. And then we had this whole crazy idea that Storm Shadow was going to put on the mask, and he was going to like see into infinity and see Baron Karza, and he was going to become like the new space glider or something. Anyway, uh, so we pitched Drift. And always pitched them as the car that you see in the toy in the IDW, IDW comics. We pitched Lockdown. I don't have a Lockdown here. Lockdown was Mad Max. He was he was Mad Max's car, and he had a big cloak and hood. Like um, was it Scavenger in Transformers Armada? That's how I saw it in my head. And at one point, we're, we were thinking, all right, what if Lockdown's on the Autobots and he's like an ex-Decepticon? Because the Decepticons aren't... There are no more Decepticons. And, and then we pitched... We were thinking about an idea like, all right, what if Lockdown's the leader of a gang called the Lords of Deception? And uh, Oil Slick was... You know, they're going to be like Sons of Anarchy. Oil Slick was in the gang. And they had the twins... The, the head of uh, Mud flap and skids over their exit and they'd be like tap every time they walked out of their exit so a little tap for good luck okay so let's open this toy up enough talk let's cut something this is all dusty because it's been sitting in the waiting area for a while and i always compare them to the ones i have on the shelf to make sure that the packages are are the same, that there's no variations, and then I take the more damaged package. So you got the junkyard where they're at in the film. We need Day Trader, who was Rekar. It's always pitched as Rekar. And I don't know who did it, I don't know how it came to be, but the pirate symbol was on Rekar in the film. And it's funny because Rekar at one point was the mechanic aboard the pirate's document that we created at Hasbro. So I don't know if somehow the, the movie team saw that and said, oh, Rekar's a pirate and we need to put that symbol. I don't know how it came about, but I was super excited that the symbol was on there. Anyway, this comes with three bonus figures that I thought I'd never get. Little baby dinosaurs. Little baby dinosaurs. Do they transform? No. So you sold me a transformer that doesn't transform. By the way, I should mention this was an exclusive to somewhere. I don't care where. No, 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 no. I think it was Entertainment Earth. Had it as an exclusive, and then um, it ended up showing a big bad toy score. All right. Drift. I believe this is a slight remold, or it might just be a straight redeco of the first version of the Studio Series Drift. He's got... I won't take them all out right now. Well, maybe we will. He's got his long... Oh. No, it looked like the way it was sitting, like it had a sheath on it. And it does not. It's just a slug piece of plastic. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's fine. It's fine. Whoa. One got away from me. It's okay. Uh, so, we've got two tiny little swords. We can plug these in to his butt right here. Literally, his butt. He's got a big old junk trunk, and they won't fit. They won't fit in his trunk. The junk won't fit in his trunk. Remember, these were supposed to go somewhere, right? Let's check the instructions. Brrr. 
Ba-ba-ba-bum. Oh, yes. Ha-ha. They, they go up here. So now he looks like Wheeljack. And it, it never, I never quite got why, if, if he looks like a ninja, but why does he have to talk with a Japanese accent? Like what is, all right, so Dino is an Italian racing car. Why does he have to talk with a, with an Italian accent? I never got it. I don't get it. I don't get it. I was there. I don't get it. I don't get it. Anyway, he's got his big. So I'm just gonna. That looks ridiculous. Drift Studio Series number thirty six. Drift Entertainment and Earth exclusives. Now, what I didn't realize is that these Dinobots, these are baby Dinobots. Where did they come from? How come they show up and do they don't have any relevance other than, hey, there's baby Dinobots that we can make out of, make toys and merchandise. I don't, the, where did they come from? What? Now, we, we had pitched for um, Age of Extinction that there'd be all these little like chompy, compy raptors around. So maybe they got it from that, like. They were like a swarm. I, I don't know. But anyway, these guys have names. They have, they have horrible names that I think they, they literally sat down and said, what would Cade Yeager call them? And this is Sharp T. He's got some articulation. The head moves. The legs move. But he doesn't transform. Maybe he hasn't grown into his transformation yet. This guy, the Triceratops. So this is a T little T Rex. A little Triceratops guy. This is called Tops. It's just Tops. Hey, oh, hey, Tops. I feel like there was a comic book or a kid show that was missed at some point. And, and we've got this guy, the pterodactyl, and his name is Terry. I think basically Triceratops were just kind of big cows. This actually looks a lot like What was that show? The Inhumanoids? The Herculoids! He looks like the guy with the Herculoids that would shoot the the rock, magma rock, snot rocket out of his middle horn. Herculoids. I have those toys somewhere. We should, we should cut the tape on those toys. Anyway, Dino. We've got Dino. I remember we pitched hard Stealth Force. Stealth Force was like, Stealth Force! Stealth Force is going to be awesome. Highway scene. Now, some of this footage was reused from the movie The Island, which you didn't see. Uh, I, actually, The Island was an okay film. The only problem was that Scarlett Johansson and Ewan McGregor didn't have any chemistry. Both fine actors on their own. Just didn't work. Uh, a lot of people complain that, oh, they're reusing footage for a highway scene. You know what? So what? So what? It's environmentally friendly. Big deal. And they added special effects to it. And you know what? It's not like, oh, I remember that scene in the island. You know, if someone didn't tell you about it, you wouldn't have known. Get over it. Get a life. Oh, we'll leave him shot there. All right. Dino. I got to tell you, 
right off the bat, I have not transformed them. This is one of my favorite Studio Series toys. He's got a nice weight to him. Everything feels really tight on him. And I don't, I don't like the transform stuff on the show. Let's see, let's see, let's just see what happens. Let's just see what happens. I, I like this. I like the way this looks. I'm glad Studio Series wasn't around when I was there because it wouldn't have been done right. This is done right. This, this has been done right. And wow, that is an interesting transformation. That is super interesting. This is like, wow. You know what this is? This is fun. When's the last time you had fun with a transformer right out of the box? It's been a while for me. I gotta tell you, it's been a while. But this, I'm digging this. I'm digging this guy. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna get him to lock in 100% the way he should. Without looking at the instructions or Professor YouTube. That's, you know, I'm sure if I puts, putzed around with it a little bit, I'd get it, but that part of the magic is, is gone as they become more poseable. But that's a win. That's a win. I like that. Ooh, Starscream. You know, I just want—I just want to open them. Yeah, I'm a mark. You put out a seeker. I don't care how many colors you put that seeker out. Hell, if you put out the generations, the old Chug seeker again, I'd buy it. I'm a mark. I'm a mark for seekers. I'm a mark. So. Let's see here. All right. We are gonna cut this guy open, right? It's got a nice way to it. Oh my God, you know what? I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you something right now. This feels like an old school Voyager. The weight on this guy and his size makes him feel like I actually got what I paid for. These guys at, what are they, 20 bucks? Or they're going up to $23? This guy, this guy feels right. Got a ton of detail on them. I love the head sculpt. I love the colors. You put this guy out in five or six more colors, I'm there. I'm so there. All right, that's it. We're done. That was cut the tape. Be nice to each other. Play with toys or don't. Put them in a glass case or not. Nobody should ever tell you how to collect or what to do with your property. Do what you want to do. Collect how you want to collect. Everyone collects their own way. And everyone displays their toys their own way. And it's special to you. But if somebody else doesn't like it, if somebody says, hey, you shouldn't open that, it's worth money, or... It's not G1, so it's crap. Or, please, monkey not trot. You collect what you like. 
And that's important. Keep washing those hands. Keep wearing those masks. Be kind to your fellow human being. And remember, even if it takes a few years, you'll always find time to cut the tape. Peace.